Curiosity. What are you so curious about? Everything. Mr. Curiosity. All righty, folks. Someone just gingerly left the recording room. That was Sean Dunn, our chief digital content producing guy. And it's only the three of us. I know. Nobody wanted to come today. Mindy's out. John Meyer's out. But you got the best two. Oh, right don't place, say that. <laughs> no, Nikki's kind of a regular and she is here, but our special guest, Nikki, let's do it in tandem. Are you ready? Three, Three two, two, one. one. Jackie Culkin! Woo! <laughs> <laughs> and no mustache. No mustache. Clean shaven Jack Culkin. I love it. So here's what you need to know. Okay. We did you on the previous version of Mr. Curiosity, which was more, I even bored myself with it. It was functional. No, no, no. No, no. No, no. I'm not talking you bored me. Okay. I'm saying I used to do one-on-one interviews, and they were great, and they were informative. And you both were guests, and I appreciate Mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. But I thought I needed a little zestiness to it. You need to switch it up. So it, 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 it evolved into this brown bag Monday Mr. Curiosity thing where now we have viewer content. They send questions, and it's now the same but different. It's more fun. It's more fun. Not that the other thing wasn't fun, but it wasn't meant to be fun. It was meant to be, like, uh, invasive and informative. This is a little more interactive. It's not story time it's now. Not it's, sto- <laughs> it's not story time. But I guess, uh, do you know much of what we're going to do here? I have no idea, <laughs> and I'm so excited for it You're all. You're in for a treat, Jack. Ooh, can't so, wait. So, Jack, these questions, brown bag at WNEP.com. It's our army of listeners, brownbag at WNEP.com. Mm-hmm. They email questions to me, and then I put them in this bag, but no one really looks at them. Sometimes as soon as they, you know, they come to me, I'll just do a quick read. But no, they go in here, and I forget I even put them in here. Oh, so we never know what we're going to get. And they're wild, and they're woolly, and they're, they're unhinged many times, aren't they, Nikki? Yeah. Yeah, we don't know what Some we're are better get. than others. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. I, I can believe that 100%. And if you would just look to your left, on the lower left on the ground, you see a garbage bag over there? I do. What's it filled with? It looks like uh, pieces of paper. There's probably 50 questions in okay. there from one guy. <laughs> <laughs> A diehard fan. That's a diehard all. Fan. Yep. So what I try to do is sprinkle his in every once in a while. Mm-hmm. So this is a mix, but there's backups and the questions keep coming. So, but before we do that, I need to know about you. Uh, I need to know some updates. What because else? Yeah. Tell here's me. Here's what I love about this, folks. That you need to know. Jack Culkin. I have a, a man crush on a fan. I love this guy. Okay. Ooh. Smart, cool, uh, uh, a great reporter. Um, um, just a local guy, kind, considerate, no big fat ego. Nikki, am I blushing in the podcast? A studio little right bit, now? a wow. little bit. I, my cheeks are no, sore from I, smiling I told you so last much. Last time, I love you. <laughs> I, and I, even behind your back, I'll ask people who like went to school with you, who, who are relatives of you, and they say the same thing. So you're just a solid dude. Try to be every yeah, day. I love it. I Everybody love it. always has so many nice things to I say know. about Jack. <laughs> Stop. I know. They, they really do. Well, he's a great guy. Thank you. He's I a great guy. That. Thank you. So I forget where I was going with this. Oh, so the point is, um, we did an interview with you. If you want to go back and hear about the history of Jack Culkin, just mm. go back in previous episodes, and we spent like an hour together. Oh, at least. So if yeah. you want to know the history of him, his life, how he ended up here, it's very interesting. But what we're going to do now is just recap. So mm. you've been here how long? A uh, little over two years and uh, I want to say two months now at this point. Two time. years and two months, Nikki. And wow. he yeah. already has made a name for himself. It's crazy. The mustache comes and goes. It does. What's with that? You know, it's a seasonal thing. It's like pumpkin spice. <laughs> it comes in when it needs to and then it leaves when it's stayed its welcome a little too long. But uh, from, it works. From a guy who has never had facial hair. Which I think is a sin, Joe. I just <laughs> don't like. I don't like anything that requires extra work. <laughs> so, I, from a guy that never had a beard, never a mustache, well, what is it you like about the mustache? I need to know why guys want mustaches. I don't get it. You know, it's. I don't know if it's like a machismo thing or, or what it is, but it just it adds. It gives me so a little g- bit more of an aura. It sets me aside from every other All right, tall so that's white guy I, walking so around. So you're looking scranton. for like identity. You're looking for yeah, a little bit of something, a little bit of pizzazz. 
We'll but can we ask when it's coming back, or is that top secret yeah, information? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Nick. It's not Thank the you. most top secret information, but let's just say after post Halloween is when the mustache <laughs> will will be coming back. Post Halloween, okay. Well, let me ask you this because you've seen it on both sides, mustache and no mustache. What are the benefits besides this this cosmetic character building thing you? What is the benefit of having a mustache? There is none. So, oh, well, I don't know if I... You, you except just, for cos... Except for, yeah, I mean... Like, if, I go to... I go to there's nothing po- functional. I go to fire scenes and, you know, police scenes, and they look at me, and there's like, oh, my God, there, look at that guy and his wonderful mustache. <laughs> oh, so must, it makes you identifiable. He must know everything. We got to go talk to him. Oh. It, it helps. Nikki, you, you agree? Okay. Does it do something like that? It, but... Uh, I I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Mickey's never had to deal with that. She but. never had a mustache. I've never had a mustache. Never had a mustache. So. But I will say the the benefit of no mustache is that I I don't look like I'm in my mid thirties anymore. Oh, you think <laughs> I, so? You think that gives you a little integrity and age? I had maybe... a few people assume I was like thirty three to thirty four. No joke, I, with the stash. Yeah, with the stash. Oh, I swear. Yeah. You when do I'm, look older with the stash. It, I've been told many times, especially when I grow the hair out a little bit too, and then I get the stash. Uh, yeah, Ugh. isn't uh, that something? And now I feel like I'm a child again. I'm like I'm a fresh, clean shaven, 24. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you're right though. Any little things you do make a big difference uh, for, for cultural reasons. Let me give you a, a couple examples of the mustache thing. Steve Martin. We all know Steve Martin. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Do you remember him in the 70s when you look at old recordings of him on Saturday Night Live or something? Do you, you guys any have recollection of way back Steve Martin? America's man. America's man. But he had gray hair his whole life. Mm-hmm. He, he looked like he was in his 60s when he was in his 20s, all because he had gray hair his whole life. Yeah. And he hasn't changed because he still has gray hair and he still looks the same. Right. And now everyone else caught up to him. Mm-hmm. That's right. Isn't it something? Yeah. So little things like gray hair, a mustache, make a big difference. Right. Yeah. I could look probably 10, 15 years younger if I dyed my hair. Do you think? I was just going to ask, do you dye it now? Because got, you got that perfect white <laughs> one on the sides and everything. I don't dye my hair. Yeah. I felt like a phony when I did it once or twice uh, just okay. for men in the shower. Yeah. It was like a crime scene. They give you rubber. <laughs> <laughs> they give you rubber gloves. You have to apply like one 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 application, wait. I had my watch. And mm-hmm. and then I was like, I just don't like it. I don't li- I'm not criticizing others for doing it, but I came out. And I and you know it was it was blondy brown yeah and no one knew I had gray hair but I felt like a fraud. I'm wondering what people would do if you'd come in with dyed hair one day. <laughs> just just jet black. <laughs> yeah. Just straight jet black hair or like a nice red. I don't oh, know. Oh red. 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 You know. I know it makes me look older, but it's all natural and I feel good yeah, about it. So go. whatever, I don't care. Whatever makes you happy. I'm doing this. Yeah. So that's thing. how I feel about your mustache. Yeah. Whatever makes you happy. It, it, it makes me happy for about the four to five months that I have it, and then there's one day where it's just like, I'm not happy anymore, and then just swipe it away. But do you, But is there, when you have it, there's a lot of upkeep, isn't there? Like cutting it out and so it doesn't go over the lips. And See, I like the bur- like the bushy mustache. You do? I, I don't, I, I'm a little untamed. I mean, I don't let it go too great. Like on the sides, I get a little stra- few stragglers. But yeah. But I, I keep it tame on the sides, but then over the lip, I, I want it to be just as... as as long as possible. All right, and the two will will we'll just will just cross slightly into the uh, uh, uncomfortable territory, <laughs> just slightly. I see the bell. <laughs> There's the bell. <laughs> <laughs> the food thing, it, it's got to get in the way. Milk sucks. Milk. I will say, yeah. Nice but doesn't like have pizza, pizza, the cheeses, no, everything's getting caught in that. It's thing. a little, it's a late night snack, you know. You just um, yeah, you but know, that sounds gross. Up. Doesn't it sound oh, gross, no. Nikki? If you had food particles <laughs> stuck to parts of your face, yeah, that's what I, 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 I can't grow a, like a full beard like some of the people that work here. But we, I, I couldn't imagine that. Like I've, I've seen people get food stuck in their beards. And it I'm like, just Ew. sounds gross. The, the mustache stays a little cleaner, though, because yeah, you're always does, drinking and stuff, so that cleans it in a way. And then I always, like, you know, I carry my little comb, so I would always comb it out like uh, yeah, all, yeah. all the time. Your so, little comb. My little, little comb. comb. I still, Nikki, they're sitting at the desk right now. They're waiting for it to come back. Okay. The second uncomfortable question involves you. So for a lady, when you're kissing a guy and there's a big mustache there, is that weird? It's like to feel all this... My boyfriend has facial hair. He has... Always has, or... Yeah. But it's not like a big burly beard, but I like it. So you like it? Yeah. And Jack, the ladies tend to like the the, stash? The girlfriend hasn't complained. She likes the clean shaven, but she also, you know, said she likes the mustache, too, so... I've never kissed 
a mustache. That's why I'm curious. I wonder what all that feels like. I couldn't even imagine. Well, Joe, give me a couple months. You know, <laughs> <laughs> we'll figure something out. <laughs> oh, my God. And the other thing that changed with you in my life is your shift has changed. It has. Yes. Tell us about it. So I am now the Lackawanna County beat reporter. I moved from Nightside, where I was for almost two years. Okay. Um, so you say Nightside for our listeners and viewers. They would watch you win. Uh, typically on the 10 and 11 o'clock. Sometimes I'd make the appearance on the 6 or 7. But mainly my shift was start at 2.30, get my story together, and then air it on the 10 and 11 Why o'clock. Why not? the 6. Too, too quick? Too quick uh, yeah, most of the stuff we're covering is happening around like later 5.30, 6 o'clock-ish right. anyways. So you're really just losing the opportunity to be in those earlier shows. But, you know, we're grateful for the 10 and the 11 o'clock. Yeah. So then two years of that, and now all of a sudden, who makes the change? Did you want the change or it just sprung on you? Or oh. you're so popular, they want you <laughs> everywhere? That's what it is. I wish. No, I don't have the same Facebook followers you guys here on the morning show do. But, you know, I I, I grew up in Lackawanna County. It's just, it's my home base in a way. And it, it's something I knew I wanted to cover at some point. I talked with, you know, Stacey Lang, who yeah. covered, the, covered the beat for more than a decade, and and she said, you know, it's something that if you live there, it's it's great because you're you're staying on top of everything that's going on. Um, Night Beat just got to the point where I, I was just ready for a change, like you. I I, oh, I so wanted you to put this in. Up. You said I asked. Yeah, I put it. Forward. Well, don't say like me. I've been doing the same thing for twenty years. Well, maybe like me. <laughs> twenty four. Yeah, yeah, like Nikki. Nikki. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nikki. You know, she put the work in in central PA and and it was just time for a change yeah and, and now, I get it yeah exactly um, so when is everyone gonna see your face now your shift so folks he comes in at 9 30 ish and I'm still here so oh. it's great to see him every day it could, is great there'd to be see weeks you. months yeah. when I never saw you yeah, I now know. I see Jack every day it'd be a podcast episode that's when I'd see you like, that's why you have today. to you're gonna be a semi-regular guy yeah, here. every once in a while I'll make the appearance all right so you come in at 9 30 and, and then you're up here where um so I've been on the beat now officially for a little more than two weeks. Um, this will be my th- the end of my third week. Um, but it, it's been going great so far, meeting a lot of people, a lot of contacts that I did know beforehand, but also, you know, I'm learning so much about the place I thought I, I grew up in and knew about. Forever. I love it. So. That's great. But yeah. when will the people see you on a newscast? Oh, on the I'm newscast. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I no, get caught up right. in, in myself. For our here. listeners, when um, they're going to see you when? Typically, I'm on the, the 5, the 6 o'clock news. Sometimes the 4 o'clock, depending on the breaking news or size of the story. But right. most mostly, you'll see me on the 5 and 6 o'clock news. There it is, folks. And the 7, right? And the 7. I yeah. do make seven. the occasional appearance on the 7 now, whenever Scott needs me. You know, But he's on vacation right now, so I'm yeah. posting through. And uh, you're saying by Halloween... There's going to be a stash. There will be a stash in Lackawanna County, not by oh, Halloween. There will be a post <laughs> post Halloween, the stash will the stash will start to make an appearance again. Would you ever consider dyeing the stash? Maybe Would a red I, stash. Why don't Why don't people do that? So, red stash. So I do have a confession. To oh, me. when I first oh <laughs> this when before I was at WNEP when I first grew the mustache in like I think it was my s- senior year of college. I was like, oh, it's a little tint of like red on this side. What? And I just was, naturally. Yeah, naturally. And just, you didn't like that? No, it was like weird looking. And then I had just like one side one or bilateral? Blo- like a few blonde hairs in here. It just the one side, the one corner over yeah, here. Yeah, it's gotta be uniform. Yeah. Yeah. So I was just like, oh, you know what? This is this is weird. I don't like this. So I went to he dyed CVS. The stash. And you dyed the stash. And I have like I had dark hair at the time because it was it was just after winter, so I was like my hair I wasn't seeing a lot of sunlight. And I was like, oh, I gotta, I gotta make it match the hair. So I bought dark, like just hair. for men. Yeah, oh, just for men. Just and for men. I bought the jet black dye. Ah. Oh, it looked atrocious. Oh no, do you have a picture? Well, I, I can. But I wait, can wait. Find so one. what do you do when it comes out too dark? Do you just keep washing it out? No, you, you, just... you can't do it. It's stained. It, once it's dark, it's you have to just let it like kind of cook in the sun a little bit, I guess, and just let it lose the. Nikki, how do you get rid of stain? hair color if you don't want it? I feel like you would know more. I being... mean, you just it it just washes out eventually. Yeah, but what if you what if you literally it washes out? You wash your hair once a day, so over days it goes away. Right. What if you kept washing your mustache every twenty minutes? Wash. wash I don't wash. know. Uh, yeah, I didn't want to try it. So <laughs> unfortunately, a few days after that, uh, the mustache yeah. was gone. Yeah. Just... <coughs> oh, so you shaved it off? Oh yeah, I got rid of it. Oh, I was like, I was yeah, my... that was probably the best solution. My friends and family were roasting me so bad. It probably that. looked like a, like a like a costume. Mustache. It looked bad. 
to. It looks so bad. <laughs> you know, after this podcast comes out, you're going to have to post a picture of that on your Facebook. Yes, I will. We'll get it up. We'll uh, get it up. Yeah. Let me see. The mustache dye. Yeah. Well, while you look for that picture, because this is mainly listened to by viewers, right. they're not going to see it anyway. Right. But uh, we can get a laugh out of it. But why don't we start getting to the questions from the people? <laughs> and what you have to do is simply reach in here mm-hmm. and pick out a question, top, bottom, middle, wherever you want. Some of these questions are eight months old, a year old. Some just went in yesterday. But go ahead, give it a pick. I love some good stuff. And if you feel uncomfortable, because I am such a caring, progressive man, <laughs> you just hit that bell and we move on. Ah, oh, okay. But make sure you preview it first because you never know what we're going to get there. You never know what you it's going to be. Gonna <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like this is a waste of paper for how little is on here. Well, what? Are you, what, what, what? <laughs> <laughs> no, he's judging the procedure. He is. Comes in the first time, judges the questions. Yeah. Screw oh. you, Jack Culkin. <laughs> <laughs> I love you too, Joe. So, who names pharmaceuticals? Sky Rizzy. Oh, Zempic, Viagra, I don't know how to say that one, and Daxify. The names are not scientific, rather seem to be made up. They are obnoxious, silly, and with just a touch of fake science. This is them, (laughs) not us. Sounding to make them more valid. I blame marketing people. How about you? Oh, so... None of us, I don't don't have any idea. I have no idea. But it is very annoying, isn't it? It is. Because when you think about it, no one, if, the, if some company came up with a candy bar, mm-hmm. they wouldn't come up with names like Sky Rizzy and Ozempic. Hey. They come out with fun names. Mr. Right. Goodbar. Mr. Yeah. Goodbar. So, and, and they can't be scientific because there's, so what is it? Who comes up with the, they're like in the middle of bizarre and scientific. What, what, who, does anyone know? I don't. That's it. That's an interesting question. Isn't it? I wonder if it's based off the chemicals that are in it. Like but then, the chemical. Then it would be like bone? tetracycline, and that would be, you know, like a like an antibiotic or something. Mm-hmm. They yeah. have good names because they're scientific. Right. Penicillin. Yeah. It's almost like these are someone is making these names up, and they're not based in anything, right. which is annoying. And me. I know a lot of them follow, like, do follow the same formulas. At least to get the drug itself. So I, I'm going to look quick now while you guys talk. I'm looking. Who names pharmaceuticals? Yeah, because some of them, some half of them, you can't even pronounce. Right. It's so annoying. But Ozempic. And don't even get me started on all the commercials. Oh God. Oh. They're just the fakest thing in the world. They're Uh terrible. The acting. (laughs) According to AI, the process of naming prescription drugs is complex and involves multiple organizations, including pharmaceutical companies. That require approval from the f- oh, from the brand name and Federal Drug Administration, food FDA, other organizations. It can be long and laborious, beginning before the drug has even been approved. So someone, it's companies and corporations and groups, and it stinks. Huh. Boo. Viagra, Ozempic, Sky Rizzi. Whoever named Sky Rizzi. Something has to be done. Get him out. It's, it's very <laughs> annoying. Get him out of here. Get get him on it. Sky Rizzy. I picture some guy. There's a there's a boardroom. There's suits. There's glasses. And this one will sound good. It'll attract all. It, it, stop Let's call it. it Sky Rizzy. Yeah. And the Ozempic song. Do you like it? Oh oh oh, oh Ozempic. Uh, it is. It's it kind of catchy. Really Everything really. about this is. But it's like I, I when I think of like. And a good O, so I think of like O O O O'Reilly's Auto Parts. Like okay. that's that's yeah, what I'm thinking. Yeah, yeah. Like I'm, I'm thinking about that. I'm not thinking about O O O O So we don't have a clear answer, but it's it's a very involved process, and they said it involves mar- pharmaceutical marketing companies. So that says it all right there. Once marketing, just between the three of us here, once marketers get in on anything, it ruins it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or does it? I don't know. Jack, I don't you know. No, no comment. Yeah, <laughs> Bell. Where's the Bell? <laughs> you know, because then they try to be appealing and they pander, right. and that's all I'm saying. Right. And it takes the realness out of it. All right. So, did you like that first question? That was, you a, that was, a, that was an interesting one. N- Nikki's ready to go. Are you on any pharmaceuticals? You don't want to say. Uh, you know, nah, we'll You're talk <laughs> after. <laughs> oh, I'm on blood pressure meds. Really? No surprise, right? Uh, High strung. Yeah, you got a lot going on. Yeah, I'm I'm slim, but I'm 
I don't know. I think everything's there's, there's, racing at me at all the time. Bike, yeah, well, does the biking boost that all the time? Doc or? says it's genetic, nothing I can do. Really? Yeah, it's like my gray hair. High blood pressure and gray hair, I can't control it. What do you got, Nikki? Is this a good one? Uh, uh. I remember, it, this is, hey, Joe. I remember years ago when there would be storm warnings, they'd often be accompanied by statements like, the storm will be near Bear Creek at 817. Oh. I feel like I haven't seen that in a while. Why did they stop? Oh. That's, that's from Chris. This is a meteorological question, and I don't have the answer. I thought they still do that. So when we put those crawls on the TV screen, mm -hmm. I think the listeners out there need to know, WNEP is not doing that. Meaning I'm oh. not. Well, what I'm saying, we're putting it up there, but it's coming right from the National Weather Service. We are obligated to do that. So there's no one in the WNEP meteorological office typing that in or putting in that it'll be near Bear Creek, or, um, you know, Kurt Aaron's not sitting there saying, oh, I think it'll... That's done by the National Weather Service. So oh, we're okay. just obligated to share the information to protect our public. Right. Okay. So why they stopped doing that, I don't know. I thought they still do that. But this hmm. must be an NWS thing, National Weather Service, if it is stopped. Interesting. And it's a good question. Do you know what she means? How it would say, the storm is now centered near Center Moreland, and it will be... Right. And did you yeah, see it I didn't know they didn't the, do that yeah. anymore like a either. like come across yeah. the bottom. Because yeah. that was helpful when it they was did helpful. that. Yeah. It was helpful. Mm -hmm. And even the... Uh, people probably already know this, but whenever there's an issue of a warning or a watch, we have nothing to do with that. I think our public generally knows that. Right. That gets we, called in. It has to be official government entity. Yeah. And then we are honored to share that with our viewers. Right. You should hear the siren that goes off when, when the tornado. Oh, yeah. Here in the, the newsroom. Oh, we'll <laughs> <laughs> horrible. It sounds like a dying whale, but that that's our way here at WDP to alert everybody. Right. This is, this is big. Get yeah. on it. Reporters, meteorologists, journalists, everybody get on this. Right. But, uh, yeah, we... And this brings up another subject. The National Weather Service does issue all of those things. Could you guys think of another private entity, a company, like these drug companies, that creates things on TV meteorologically that aren't really for mar they're for marketing purposes only? Speaking of marketers, the Weather Channel, what do they do with winter storms? You guys never heard Ooh. of this? They name them. Oh, when they uh, name them. Oh, yeah, and we can't use the names. So a lot of folks think that that's uh, an official National Weather Service um, designation. It's not. That's a company, like WNEP <laughs> is owned by a company. That's the, the Weather Channel, which is not a government entity. It's a company, like Pepsi, like Coke. And they I decided, didn't know that. And they decided to name winter storms, like hurricanes. And they come up with things like Tabitha and Cyril. And this weekend, if it's like January the 8th, okay, let's talk about, let's talk about Nor'easter Gladys. And they have names for all these um, um, winter storms. No, I and remember, it's a scam. I remember that happened to me once. I was doing a script, and I put the name of the storm in. And I, I for, in no the winter? Idea. Yeah, in the winter. And I had no idea. And then I was told I had to take the name out. Isn't that I, C? I, I didn't it's know that. Weather. Yeah. So the only storms that the National Weather Service agree upon, that's, a, that's actually a, a global agreement among scientists, to name hurricanes and tropical storms, but not winter storms. That's just some marketing gimmick from the, National, from the Weather Service. So uh, sorry, can, from the Weather Channel. Can you just start naming storms on your own? That's like if we did that. That's like if WNEP said, oh, let's name this, this uh, Sunday storm Jack Culkin. Yeah. We can do that, and we would say it to our viewers, but it doesn't have any viability. Right. Yeah. Uh, it would be marketing. It's almost like a good example if we name barn fires. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. All right. There's been a barn fire in Bloomsburg today. Let's call it barn, barn fire. Barn Barney. fire Bonnie. Barn fire Bonnie. Yeah. <laughs> and then no one in the Scranton Times or a newspaper would say, bon, you know, fire Bonnie in Bloomsburg. They wouldn't do that because it's not official. Right. That's just us doing it. Oh. Interesting. So isn't that no interesting? Yeah. So know. the Weather Channel names winter storms. It's marketing, just like Sky Rizzy. <laughs> oh God! As for that scroll, I'm not sure uh, why that stopped or why it's still going on. All right, here we go. <sighs> dum, 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 dum. Jack Colkin, why do you still? No. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wow, this is this is this is a long, <clears throat> long time for me. When you when you're getting ready to leave a job, traditionally, says Travis, 
You put in two weeks notice. Why is that the length of time? Why not one week? Why not four? Who made this up? Wow. Travis with these good questions. And yeah. another point, is that official or is that a courtesy? Uh, it's, it's a I believe it's a courtesy. It's a courtesy, right? Yeah. It's a courtesy, but I, ever since I started <coughs> working, it's kind of the standard, I feel like. Right. But, Nikki, if you wanted to, after this podcast, leave WNEP, you no one says you need two weeks. You could have just go over to our manager and say, I quit. I guess. Which Nick, Nikki does not want to do. I she's, know. I'm, she's I'm very not. happy. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you see, what he, this is what this podcast is all about, questioning things. Who right. said two weeks? I don't know. And is that official? Is it written down in some book somewhere, documentation? I, I don't I don't believe it's official. I, I, I feel like I had this conversation with somebody. I don't believe it's official. Okay. I believe the two-week is because that gives the company what? enough time to post an application. Post, do the paperwork. Do the paperwork. And, well, that's, I and get it. And then to find your it. replacement, hopefully by that two-week period, and then you could pursue other options. Yeah. I mean, did someone just sit down and say one day... Two weeks. I'm going to give them two weeks as a courtesy, and then it just stuck. And then it just stuck, and now everyone copies. Let's see what Google has to say. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about Ozempic versus Sky Rizzi? That's a left-field question. We were just talking <laughs> no, about just two kidding. weeks. No, I'm just going back to that. All right, so did you find an answer? I'm looking. Because while you're looking, I'm going to pick a question for you now. Here we go. Because it's No, you know what? I'm not going to do that. You're so skilled, you can both search that answer and go ahead and pick a new question. And Jackson, new look, question. one hand in the Where bucket, going? one hand on his phone. Two weeks notice, here's your answer. All right. Two weeks notice, we'll get that right out of the way first. So what Google is saying is, in most cases, two weeks is enough time for you to wrap up your projects, leave good notes for your successor, and allow the company to begin the hiring process before you leave. Okay, we assume all that, but there's nothing official, I guess, There's nothing set saying. in stone that you have to no, give them two weeks. No, it could be three weeks. It could be four days. Hey, I'm quitting. Uh, next Thursday, I'm out of here. Why can't you do that? Good question. It's just to be nice to but your company. Is it nice to say God bless you when someone sneezes? That's not a rule. These are <laughs> these. Is it? You don't have to do this. I guess. Right. Is what yeah. You don't, you don't have, have to. No. Oh no. You can. Again, you can walk out today. I believe and face no repercussions. Unless what do you guys think is the cut down? Let's say the cutoff. What if someone did it twelve days? Is that still okay? What if they did ten? Where does it become rude? I, I don't know. Does it depend on the job? Right. Yeah, it depends on the – yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, if you're working the French fryer at Burger King, right. you have to give two, two weeks' notice? If, you're, if your company's closing and you know, you know it's shutting down, do you have the right to leave that day if you get an opportunity the next? I think more important than all this, do you tell yourself two weeks' notice on your mustache? Do you say, like I, – I, He knows when it's time to go. <laughs> He knows. <laughs> he knows when it's time to go. He Do you hear what he just said? He knows when it's time to go. Joe, so we got another weather question. Oh, all right. I love it. I love it. Here we go. Maybe Joe, our leader of all wisdom, that's exactly what they said. Um, <laughs> How true that can is. Can tell us why a tornado isn't a tornado until the National Weather Service confirms it. Why does a tornado need to be confirmed, and who needs to know whether the tornado occurred? What do you guys think? You know the answer is because you probably did reporting on this with the National Weather Service. So I, I've covered two tornadoes landing since I've started here, okay. uh, one in Mahanoy City and then another one in Wayne County. The one in Mahanoy City, there's, like, clear video. You see, the like, the funnel start, and then you see the damage. Constru you see the destruction aftermath. So I, I don't know. If, I'm, like, if you're there, I think you're able to say it. But, I mean, you don't want to be fear-mongering at the same time, like, oh, this True. was a tornado. So here's, yeah, here's the deal. So um, I have no journalism background. Mm -hmm. I'm all science. And as far as I know, you guys have no science background, but you're all journalism. I'm actually a chemical engineer. <laughs> no, <laughs> just here's kidding. what I'm getting at. <laughs> what I love about your field and my field is this. It says to the world, give us the facts. That's all we want. We yeah. can't make things up. We can't mm -hmm. give us our. We can't give you our bias. We can't give you our uh, subjective th thoughts. It's pure facts and information. Your career and my career. 
So with tornadoes, you could have the most uh, well-read, most well-intentioned person, uh, a community leader, uh, a priest who's believable, a mom who's believable, a teacher, say, I saw a tornado. And we can't say, oh, on the news, Mary saw a tornado. It was over Bloomsburg today because that's not based on what? Facts. Facts. Yeah. yeah. So the National Weather Service has to go investigate tornado sites or potential tornado sites because there's a lot of things in the sky that look like a tornado. Mm -hmm. Funnel clouds can hang down from a cloud. It's called scud. It looks just like a funnel hanging down, but it's not rotation, and it's really not a tornado with the winds um, circulating around it. So there are thunderstorms that produce these massive downburst winds. Over 100 miles an hour, a regular thunderstorm can just fall to the ground with this air and knock trees down and even structures. Is that a tornado? Something I hear a lot about. Straight, straight line. Straight line winds. That's what I'm talking about. Yes. So if one of these thunderstorms has this downdraft of cool air and it knocks trees straight down and knocks structures over, the average person can say, oh, my God, that was a tornado. It yeah. wasn't. Right. So the National Weather Service, when they hear about people saying they saw a tornado or the damage, they have to go there. They have to get data. They have to look at the old radar signature and see if there was rotation. Then they have to look at the damage and see if it has rotation. And then they have to investigate and ask people, did you definitely see rotation? So they build their facts and then make a proclamation saying it was a tornado. And if big or small, does the Weather Service normally investigate all claims? Like, are they pretty good on everything? They, they can't do that because there's so many. You you guys know in our business, every time there's wicked weather around here and thunderstorms, everybody sees a tornado. Everybody Very sees true. a tornado. And if they, they don't have enough manpower to cover every sighting. Right. So they're looking for signatures on the data, and then they're looking for confirmed, more solid reports. Then they'll send someone there to look at the debris pattern mm -hmm. to make sure it wasn't straight line. People constantly, you know, with my – I would – see this out reporting, people would constantly be fighting if it was a tornado or if it was straight line winds. It seems like they're obsessed. They want a tornado. They want a tornado. They want people and they see things they want. Yeah. That's just how it is. Right. When you when you you know, you can see the Virgin Mary in a piece of toast if you want to. It happens. You've never seen that? It's like when you uh, get want a new car and you like the, a certain brand of car, oh. you see that car everywhere. Though. Yeah, you oh. do. At least that, that, that's what happens for me. Yeah, it's almost like a confirmation bias. Yeah. But I'm trying to think of that term. Um, it slips my mind now. But when you see, like I said, religious figures and in, in burn marks on toast or something. Mm -hmm. You've heard that, that before, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's like, look at this piece of toast. It was sent to me from heaven. I see the image of Jesus on it or something. It's not really there. But it's you like, see what you want to see. It's like seeing a puppy dog in the clouds. It's like, that looks oh, like a puppy. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Weather, perfect. weather related, you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you think I should have stayed away from the religious one? Is that what you're saying? No. Yeah, because I know it, a lot of people it, who it's see. Joe, it's Joe's brown bag. You know? <laughs> it's not my brown bag. <laughs> All right, Nikki's term. I have seen, because I love my wife so much, I see her. And grilled cheese sandwiches all the time. <laughs> <laughs> and on slices of pizza. The way the cheese is spread out, wait, 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 just, oh. I, every piece of slice of pizza looks like her. Babe, come here. They made it special. Just yeah. For me. <laughs> yes. This one's for us, honey. Oh, Let's eat God. it together. Like. <laughs> Why did Joe quit using the there ain't no tea in Scranton jingle? <laughs> I love I loved it and used to sing it all day long. Is there any possibility of it making a comeback? Sincerely, reminiscing in Rome, PA. I love it. So you guys probably don't know this, but I had a segment during my forecast. There, I, I know a local artist who wrote that song. <laughs> there ain't no tea in Scranton. And it went on and on and on. And we used to play that while I did a weather segment. And we no longer play it. I don't know why. I like to rotate my bits. You know, I have like Lord Cluckington. Right. Um, and all these different uh, trip back in time, glamorous time travel. I try to change them up. Mm -hmm. They okay. have a lifespan. That one I got rid of. You got to switch it up. Got to switch it up. Switch Maybe it. I'll bring it back someday. Is there a T in Scranton, as far as you guys know? Do, let's Google. Paper, let's Google. Yes. Come on, let's Google. I when I say it, I pronounce it Scranton. I'm going to Google it. How how about our Lackawanna County? S C R A N T O N. It's there. 
there. It is there. It's there. On <laughs> paper. But when you vocalize it, it's Scranton. Scranton. And then sometimes when you overdo it, that's wrong too. It's very subtle. If you, you don't want to be the person going Scranton or Scranton. Scranton. Oh, that that uh, You don't want it. Yeah, you don't want to be Scranton and you don't want to be Scranton. People, it's a fine path, a fine people line. People have called talk back before because I say county instead oh, of county. county. So it's well, where's the W? <laughs> Where, where's the W, Nikki? <laughs> give me, you guys, give me, give me these words. Give me, uh, give me. I, mean, I, I can't tell you what to say, but that day in May that honors vets. Veterans Day. Some people say Veterans Day. Veterans Day. Veterans Day. Right. Do you want to be an overpronouncer? Veterans Day. Well, it's like it's like. Uh, how, how about that second month of the year? What, how do you say that one? February. Yeah, but it's February. How do you say that, Joe? Do you want to be an over February guy? February. February. You don't want to be that. And he's showing me a word here. I say crayon. You say crayon? Yeah, it's crayon. It's what now? Crayon. It's crayon. What am I saying? You're saying crayon. It's crayon. I say crayon. I say, yeah, crayon. And you brought out a major flaw because I'm a local guy here, and I y- I should say what now? Crayon. And I say crayon. Yeah. And it's crayon. I say crayon. Just like pecan, pecan, oh. caramel, caramel. What about the people that sell you homes? What are they called? Realtors. 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 You ever hear? They go, realtor. <laughs> That's an I, annoying I, one. It's spelled that way, but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's the the area, the Nipa, Nipa isms is what we like to call. How do you s- how do you say this word? H e i g h t. Height. Height. Yeah. Say it again. So. Height. Height. So my whole life, I said height. 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 Because everyone I knew growing up said that. And yeah, I still yeah. say it as a 58-year-old, well-educated man. It's okay. terrible. Hey, yeah. I never heard that. No. The, this is the first. This is the well, first. there's a lot of words ending in yeah. G-H-T, and you say that. Why do you not do it? What, What's hey. your opinion on the recent talkback controversy with Here um, we go. Our, our one and only Melissa Steininger okay. and her pronunciation of Wilkes-Barre? That's, but there's no answer to that one. I, I it, Correct? There's no correct answer and from what i've heard there's no yeah he's right there's no way to there's say no it. there's no correct how, way how to do say you it. say it? i say wilkes berry i say wilkes berry wilkes berry my boyfriend says wilkes bear or wilkes oh i don't bar know. wilkes bar, wilkes bar. Uh, that, that one bothers me that one bothers me <laughs> and then the, you don't want to be the over berry no wilkes berry wilkes berry i think wilkes. it's wilkes bear wilkes bear wilkes bear wilkes bear yeah well how yeah. does melissa say it realtor <laughs> Sky Rizzy. Sky Rizzy. Ozempic. Ozempic. Viagra. Funnel cloud. Tornado. Straight line winds. Downburst. Berwick. No, that's what the last straight line wind was. That's all. That's <laughs> all. <laughs> we, play, we can play that game. Whose turn is it? We're almost wrapping things up here. I think we are now. Oh, yeah. We're almost. Four. Who, did we? It's your turn. Oh, well, then we're going to go to Jack, and then that's going to be it. Yeah, yeah, ready? yeah, I'm good. Here we go. go. Ooh, uh-oh, one of these. These are old, baby. Ooh. These are old. These little strips here. Strip of paper. Looks long, too. I'm sure you all get recognized in public uh, since I see yous on TV every morning. You, it does yous. say yous. Yous. But are your kids embarrassed by your job? Like, do they brag to their friends that that their mom or dad is on TV, or that they try to hide it? I hate it when people ask questions about that. What's it like having a famous parent? Or maybe the kids don't even know you all because uh, they can't see you on the iPad and phone. Clark from Tremont. I guess I'm the only one that can answer this, so, right? We could speak to we it. We could speak to significant others. Yeah. Well, yeah, like, okay. Uh, hopefully, you know, no kids out there that are upset, oh with, my God. upset with Jack. But um, <laughs> no, my, uh, my, uh, my parents, like, they they do they don't brag about it but like th- they'll make the point it's like oh you know my son is on WNEP yeah, yeah my yeah. friends push it to the extent like we'll be out on a Friday night and my one buddy just likes to scream this guy's on the news okay so do mine yeah. oh. so and even an old guy like me same thing my friends do that so yeah abuse but uh, what what do the kids think 
So my kids are older now, but when they were younger, they were very, I think, excited and proud of it. And then they get to that teenage age, and they're probably like, you know, I don't know. I think they always enjoyed it, to be honest. I yeah. think it was pretty, a pretty cool thing. I feel like it's different. News is different than, like, like a movie star, like, a, I don't know, so, somebody in that realm, because it's like... But, because you're more factual, or like you're not. Okay. I don't know. You're more real in a in a sense. But I think there's human nature involved here too, because I remember Barack Obama talking about when he was president, how all of his friends would bust him about <laughs> being president. Which is like, you know what I mean? So it go <laughs> yeah. it extends that far. If you grow up with someone and you remember when they urinated in their pants or vomited yeah. in second grade, <laughs> or or got dumped by a girl in tenth grade. Right. Then they're that forever. And right. when you become something prestigious like the president, you're always still going to be the kid who pissed his pants when you he You always old. are. Oh, yeah. yeah. And you get, a, you get abused the same yeah, way so. by your friends. <laughs> like, it, I'll, I'll, when I first started, I had a tendency. I'd blink a lot. I was just, I was just <laughs> nervous. You're, you're a blinker. I was, I was a blinker. I would just blink a lot. And with my, the mustache or uh, without? Uh, <laughs> A little bit with the mustache. Every once a, a mustache while, blinker. I, I've grown out of it more. I never noticed that. But thank you. Um, I never noticed it either. Uh, I, I hit a lot of those bad ones from, from the world's view. Yeah. Um, but my buddy, every time I do it, he would just, like, w- whether it be a Friday night before so I go meet them out. Oh, he'd he would he'd text me. He'd be like, how many times did you blink that time? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Th- no, That's Nikki, terrible. this is what good friends do. They yeah. do. Especially guy Abuse. friends. Yeah, guy, guy friends just pick. Relentlessly on each other. It's yeah. something we do. One of my friends, he is. stole my business cards, and we were at Backyard Ale House downtown, <laughs> and he just started passing out my business oh, cards. Oh, man. <laughs> just, and I'm like, looking, I, I went back to my truck, I see my little business card box is open. I'm like, where are all my business cards? And he's like, oh, they're gone. Oh, no. <laughs> like, oh. That's funny. Luckily, I never got any calls, but. They love it. Uh, Your friends love it. They, they love the abuse. And, you know, it's funny sometimes. And then. It's it's nice every once in a while, but and then most of the time I'm like, yeah, hi, I'm on the news. Yeah, don't talk to me. Yeah, about could you? It. Could, well, could you imagine if you are president or uh, a, a national, you know, uh, reporter or a Tom Cruise, a national celebrity? Ever? It just right. It would be. Yeah, how do you be his friend? It's constant. Yeah. Awkwardness. It would be this on a much bigger scale. Yeah, right. it's got to be weird. Well, you see the abuse with like paparazzi and stuff. Yeah, like that. all uh, of that, that would, right? That would send me over the moon. I, I wouldn't be able to deal with that stuff. I like privacy every once in a while. Like Taylor Swift's friends. I can't imagine. Ooh, well, what are they? They Could well, they? A lot of her friends like, are Like Taylor, who do you too? think you are? Right. Like yeah. Taylor, why'd you do this? Why'd you? I don't know. I don't think you women do it as much as us guys. We constantly pick on each other. We're Luckily, horrible. Luckily, my boyfriend's good about it. When we go out and stuff, people mm-hmm. will come up and oh, you're Nikki cries, and he'll just he'll just laugh, and yeah. smile. Uh, I get like the mayor comments all the time. So it must be nice being the mayor, like knowing all these people. Like oh all the yeah, because you do reach out <laughs> all the time. Well, Mayor Culkin, last question is last right now, and then we're going to end this segment. Make it a good one, buddy. Now, why'd you go right from the top like we'll, that? We'll dig, oh, we'll, now why you digging? We'll dig in. Look at those arms. I don't even know how he fits those things in the back. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, those triceps and biceps, you, you know. How much do you work out a week? Hitting so the weights. It's been very. Uh, you're gonna be surprised. I haven't been to the gym probably in about four months. Four months. Four, four months. Five months. Um, you're gonna lose that muscle mass soon, buddy. <laughs> I, uh, I. Let's go at it right now. Yeah. I'll show you what a wire you old guy. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. No, I. Uh, my chance. I actually, I, I bought a house not too long ago. Yeah, you told me you're gonna be doing a lot of fixing. Yeah, we're working a lot on that. So that's where a lot of my spare time that's goes. That's a workout in itself. Oh, God. Sure. You, ain't, you ain't kidding. But. Take us away, brother. Take us away. So this is from Mary, and she is wondering. If Ranger and Rocco are professionally trained. Oh, my God. So, wait, wait, back up now. I know Ranger's Kurt's dog. Is Rocco another dog? Rocco's his newest. Oh, I did not know that. Okay. Okay. Uh, My dog, four years, doesn't listen. Need info on Kurt's trainer is if he has one. Thank you. We don't have that answer, and I don't. Do you guys know? I have no idea. I have no idea. Do you guys have pet? You have birds? Do you have dogs? Allergic. Allergic. So, I'll say this then as an owner of Jet or. Father of Jet, whatever you want to call me. Uh, I don't train. I'm anti-train. Anti-train? Yeah, I'm actually anti-train. Let them run wild? I love when, when, yeah, I want them to be free. My wife took Jet for a walk yesterday. Yeah. Around Murley Cernoski Park, which is a, a county park. <laughs> um, and she said, 
She did one lap, and then she tried. She said, "Okay, come on," and he wouldn't get back in the car. So she went to grab him by his collar, and he almost like nipped at her. Ooh. I said, oh. "I said, honey, that's your fault." I said, "If he wanted to go for another lap, you go for another lap. Ah. That's what you do. <laughs> no. He's in charge. I do that all the time. Can he be? Let I, off? Yeah, he's in charge. I'm like, if you wanted to go in, I go again. Can he go off the leash, or does he? I never use a leash anywhere I go. Really, never did. And he doesn't bother with any other dogs or any other people. I've always given him freedom, and uh, he does his own thing. That's how I like to huh. have my dogs. And even the whole like sit and pop." I don't want circus tricks. I want a friend. Oh, you know, so I don't do any of that stuff. Yeah, he's my he's my equal. I wouldn't make you sit or paw, so I'm not going to do that to a dog. Well, thank you, Joe. <laughs> I appreciate that. Joe, anything you need right there. There's my paw for you. <laughs> sit, sit, Culkin, sit. I'm sitting right now. Sit, sit, sit. No, so I don't know if Kurt trains his dogs or they're free and easy like mine, but I will say this. It was great having you here. Thank you. It's always a pleasure. And you see these questions that you just heard, folks? You can make it better in the next episode or worse. Get your questions in. Brown bag. At WNEP.com. Yeah, it's that simple. And then we'll pick them out and we'll ask them. And nothing's off limits for Joe. Nothing. <laughs> but let's end with the Ozempic song. Oh, 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 Ozempic. You know. Oh, there's, there's going to be a copyright <laughs> claim there. Curiosity. What are you so curious about? Everything. Mr. Curiosity.